Earlier today, Alex Becker made this one tweet about the current and upcoming gaming cryptos he is personally invested in. So I thought, because even though he just makes one single tweet, I would just make a video explaining to you what each of those projects are about, what they do, and maybe it's something for you as well. It was pretty insane to see that every single thing he mentioned on here had like a 10 to 20% spike just after this tweet. As always, the usual stuff, do your own research, even though this is kind of the research done for you. The, the point is, if you want to invest your own money into this and you end up losing it, not my fault. I'm just here to explain to you what those projects are about. That being said, right now in his wallet there are $2 million and pretty much everything he mentioned about, whether it's Altura, whether it's Tech, it's Virtue, Poker, or S-Fund, he actually invests into all of those. I will leave a link to his wallet overview as well as all those different games and projects mentioned in the description down below. There are timestamps so you can skip around. And we start with CDFI because it's the first thing that he's invested in on this list. I think not too long ago, he mentioned that he is now an advisor for CDFI as well. So there's another reason for him to be invested into this. And the idea of this side is that it's an incubator and launchpad for blockchain games and gamers. For example, my channel is mostly about Cryptoblades, or at least used to be when it was active. Cryptoblades Kingdoms, which is also something he mentioned, is going to be launched on Cedify. So whenever there's an initial game offering for something upcoming, there's a chance that it might be on Cedify. Meaning if you hold the Cedify token, the S Fund token in your wallet, you might hold enough to be allowed to participate in those IGOs, which means you can invest into those games before they get released. For the token price at the moment, obviously, as mentioned, everything spiked after you made the tweet. When I by 10-15%. I think when he announced that he joins them as an advisor, it spiked up until $5 and a couple cents, and then it went back down again. But right now with a market cap of 50 mil, and it's a platform that is actually useful for all the other projects, there might be room to grow for this. Next is Chain Guardians. It's play, earn, and fight. A decentralized sci-fi and anime-inspired gaming universe. If you take a look at all the Guardians available, you can see that they are legendary ones based on the uniqueness. The coin type is Bitcoin. They can flip around, so it's like a cool 3D animation for Bitsy. Stats like their max power, perfection, how many are minted. And if you were to click on Purchase Guardian, you can go onto their OpenSea page and see how expensive they are. And at the moment, a little bit, 45k, yeah. Yeah, some of them are really expensive. The floor price is 0.23, meaning even if you buy the cheapest one available, you still have to spend like $800 just to get one single card slash character. When I was searching for gameplay footage, I came across this short play demo. I don't know if this one is exactly how it's going to be like, but it seems to be a working product. You would select multiple of your characters and then you go into this battlefield where battle one out of two starts. You have your lieutenant in the bottom left and you have like four other characters. Then they attack, they deal damage, and I think you can't even see it, but there's an enemy. I feel like this is the exact same system in like Raid Shadow Legends, Axis, pretty much any other NFT game out there. This doesn't really seem to look too exciting, especially if a single character costs like $800 or more. But it's like a turn-based game, you have attacks, you can strike. Honestly, at least there's something you can do, there's some decisions you can make. The only problem I see in many NFT games is that there's no real game. It's really just like, click the one button and then you get rewarded. Right now, this one spiked from $1.10 to $1.25, also increased by over 10%. And the cool thing about the token is you can not just buy it on Ethereum and pay like $50 in gas fees, but they also have it on Binance, meaning you can buy it for like 10 cents in gas fees on Polygon, which is like a fraction of a penny. Next one is D-Race. I think Becca mentioned this like five times now in the past like two weeks. This is like a virtual game where you can buy a horse as an NFT, and then you just have horse racing and you can gamble money. All game assets are NFT, meaning you gotta buy one of those horses. Right now, the price went up to $2.93, which I think the first time we mentioned that was at probably around here, like 70, 80 cents. It is also weird that sometimes you can see those insane dips. So it went down to like 73 cents, then back up again. And it looks like you can buy it on Ethereum, so on like Uniswap, or you can buy it on PancakeSwap. Do you guys like horses and gambling and a market cap that is not displayed? Well, maybe look into D-Race. Next is Snook. Snook is the newest one that Becca talked about when it comes to like an actual game that you can play right now. The idea is that if you ever played Slither.io, where you have to collect a bunch of power ops as a snake and you are on a PvP map. So this is how the gameplay would look like. If you bump your head into like another snake, pretty sure you die. And if you collect any of those power ops, then you just grow in size. For example, right here, you can see there's a giant line of different assets of crypto that you can get and there's another one who just died. This is how the gameplay would be like. Basically, Slither.io. It's on Polygon, so they're close to no gas fees. It's worth $2 at the moment. And in the past month, this one went from, never mind, it went down a lot. But this one is a working game, and the market cap is 
I would assume like a third of the fully diluted market cap, so like 30, 40 mil. This is actually a game that you can play and it doesn't seem too expensive. Crypto Meta Tech. The token is called Tech. Right now it's worth 7.7 .7 cents. In total, this one went up by nothing. It went down by actually 50% in the past like two weeks. However, the idea is pretty cool. So right now in Crypto Meta, you can do the same thing you can do in other NFT games. You can collect cards, you can have your characters, you can play the game, you have play to earn, every single asset you have is an NFT, the usual stuff. But what is kind of cool is if you would like to upgrade your cards, which they mentioned over here in their short three minute trailer video, then you burn those cards, meaning the supply gets more rare, the token price increases because if you would like to have the commander guy, you're gonna burn some to get the guy. Obviously, depending on how many characters you have and how good your character is, you get different airdrop NFTs in the future. You can stake them and earn some money, you can play the game. But here's the thing when it comes to playing the game, and that is the same thing I mentioned in the other games. Doesn't this all like identical? Isn't it always the same thing? It's like, there's one guy on the left side, the enemy's on the right, then you click the button, you deal damage. So uh, there's yet another game in that in that concept and numerous ways on how to be successful in meta wars use obtain powerful nfts apply strategic thinking and be better than your opponents you will notice that in the list of things that alex becker mentioned he mentioned meta wars in the end i think he tried to type in meta wars and it got automatically corrected same with like engine starter he tried to say engine starter so i think meta wars is just the game which you can use your crypto meta tokens for right now you can just buy the token so it's kind of out already but you can't play the game what i think is kind of cool is that they tried to implement augmented reality elements meaning that you can use your camera on your phone and then you can you know look around see things basically how in pokemon go you can see the pokemon in real life they got a team of three and advisors of four and it seems like somewhat of a good project next is altura altura is a platform where you have like advanced nfts i think i talked about dynamic nfts a couple days ago in ether cards and they have smart nfts meaning that the items or the nfts that you have can evolve over time they have more than one use case so instead of just you buy into a let's say 10,000 profile picture collection and then you have a profile picture which is literally useless because it's just the picture but the value goes up because scarcity in here the nfts you own can level up can get stronger you might get airdrops based on that. You might get entries to different sites and events in the future. It's like NFTs, but more interesting. Right now, the Artura price, again, the moment he tweets about that, goes up by like 10, 20%. I personally hold some until this point, And then I just clicked on salt because this is the inflation price you don't want to buy into. And usually it falls back down after. In the past month, we've seen that it went up from less than one cent up to 4.2 cents at the peak. And the cool thing about this project is compared to like most other projects and games that I covered on this channel, this one works. You can actually use it right now. For example, right now you can see their Pixel Piggies, Nifty Space Genesis Pixel Puppies. It's another NFT platform where you can use either BNB or the ALU, the Altero token, to purchase NFTs. I bought one of the first sets of NFTs on here, the Penguins, and I'm about to sell one of them for like twice the price. When it comes to NFTs personally, I'm not Mr. Diamond Hands, I just try to flip them because you never know where they end up. And my dad always said quick money is good money, so I just sell them for twice the price and then I got my investment back. But yeah, I own one of those penguins. Next is Network. Be the first in Network's new metaverse, white paper tokenomics and a trailer. In the trailer you have some flashy animations and then people are walking around talking about it. It's basically a VR game that also seems to be like a sandboxy style. Like when you look at this, this reminds me of building houses in sims and like sims 3 like 10 12 years ago but it's like in vr you can pretty much terraform the entire planet apparently the land pre-sale has already begun and the network token that you used to buy the assets can be used to buy assets within the virtual reality world you are in assets can include buildings vehicles houses along with many other that will be found in the network market you can buy land you can buy ad space this might actually be a really cool project if we get to the point in time where VR is actually something we commonly use on a daily basis and then we walk around like in Ready Player One and people really pay for advertisements that we can't block that we have to look at. But I'm pretty sure, and that's just me, we're not there yet. Like, have you ever played VR chat? Kinda cool. Have you played Minecraft in VR? But it's not like how you would imagine a VR world to be. There's no full suit that you can wear. You can't really walk around. You just press a button on your controller. And if this one becomes more advanced over time, then there's a pretty good chance this one might be a good investment as usual. No advice because there are many people trying to make things in VR work. I don't see exactly how this one is different than any of the other projects besides the part that you can buy the token and in-game assets on the blockchain. Price is at $1.92. You can buy it only on ETH, meaning if you want to pay like 60 to $100 in gas fees, go for it. A project he mentioned a couple weeks ago was UFO. I think he 
said this is fly like a UFO, like some random expression where he hinted towards this. People that invested into it, I think 4x to 5x the money from here to here. But it's yet another thing only on Ethereum, which is going to be expensive. Welcome to the Dark Metaverse, the truth is out there. The Dark Metaverse will serve as a virtual universe built with a closed loop economy. As games get added to the economy, the value of the token and the ecosystem increases exponentially. The thing is, every time they say as things happen, they might also say if things happen. You want to be critical about all those projects because you don't know if they deliver. So this one basically tells you if they don't add games, the token goes down in value. They want to have an ever-expanding realm in the dark metaverse, and it will consist of play-to-earn games with breedable in-game NFTs and virtual land that will entitle collectors to in-game revenue. What I would like to see is if this company or this project works together with Mana, Decentraland, because they already have somewhat of a working project. They also have Decentral games where you can like gamble in online casinos, but in VR. I would just like to have all those crypto projects just work together to make like one good project instead of like 20 meh projects that nobody wants to use. All those projects seem kind of cool, right? If this one is actually something that turns out to be good and you can really play in VR to earn some money, it's awesome, right? It's an RPG style game where you use the UFO token to mint characters and complete quests. And if they actually deliver, awesome. But until that happens, we're gonna see. And then for the last game he mentioned that is already out, it is Virtue Poker, where you play poker online. But the difference compared to like Poker Stars or Bull Tilt Poker, I never really played poker, is that this one is decentralized and it uses the ETH blockchain and P2P networking to provide an online poker site that's safe, honest, and fun. They have celebrity charity events with like Phil Ivey and other known players and apparently Mr. Beast as well, which is pretty cool to see because he's one of the biggest YouTubers, gets the most views on average per video on the entire platform platform and he's into crypto so just slapping his face onto this and putting him into an event that's a good sign if you ever played poker online then this is just poker online but with crypto the first time this one was mentioned i think it spiked from 30 cents to up to 70 cents around here and because you can buy this on binance as well on pancake swap i think i bought this at like 60 cents sold it at 70 then i went back down to 16 i sold it again at 70 i think i'm at like 0 0.4 0 0.5 bnb in that progress because it's really easy for market caps that are below 10 million to get insanely inflated in no time the trading volume in the past 24 hours is almost a million dollars so that's over 10 percent of their current market cap but the fully diluted market cap is 300 100 mil. Also, the circulating supply at the moment is only 14.5 million, but there's a max of 500 mil. 97% of that is somewhere else. But in short, if you like poker and you play poker anyways and you're into crypto, maybe this is something for you. Now to the upcoming projects that he mentioned, we get Engine Starter, Forest Knight, Mines of Delania, and Crypto Blades Kingdom. It's the next generation launchpad for blockchain gaming at Metaverses. You can enter your email to stay updated, you can click on whitelist now, which then tells you token sale whitelisting event. Token sale whitelisting event has ended. So we are late. What do they do? Build an engine's jump net and the roadmap towards infinity. Our propriety platform will allow creators and game developers to run capital racing campaigns and build communities concurrently. They're also going to offer developers a way to explore other innovative ways of raising capital to fund their projects through a sale of virtual items and NFTs. Basically, when we talked about Seedify earlier, it's also another launchpad. There's Engine. They call themselves the creators of the multiverse. And if their marketplace is actually any different than from other launchpads like Redkite or Seedify, we're going to find out soon. Next day is Forest. Forest Knight, which is going to be an app on your phone, a game that you can play. And it will be an epic adventure, which awaits us in the fantasy world of Chrono Will. Build your winning dream team for each battle in this turn-based strategy mobile game. Oh, a turn-based game. Mobile. Haven't seen that today, have we? I used to play games like Grapolis, Ikarium, Travian, all those city building games on your browser. And this kind of reminds me of that. We have different resources. You can do all your battles, all your fights. And if you take a look at their early access trailer, they first of all have likes on the video instead of like this section turned off. You can see some gameplay footage from their unreleased game. And honestly, this kind of looks like Red Shadow Legends right here. There isn't really much innovation you can do when it comes to mobile games, but if this one is a play to earn slash NFT game that works on your phone and it actually is not a scam, then seems like a cool thing you can do. Back in school, I used to play like Clash of Clans every single day, just log in, do some fights, get some resources, upgrade my village. And then I came back home and listened to Corpic Lani, which that's my music recommendation for the day. Good band. Then we got Mines of Delania. Conquer the unknown and build your wealth. It's an action adventure game. Players mine and combine various in game assets, improving their skills and gear to unlock the MOD universe. Something is better than nothing. If your time is about to run out, you can abort your run and still keep 50% of the resources you have obtained. And that is because this game seems to be like a giant maze where you have to find the exit in. On your way, you collect a bunch of resources, and eventually, when you find this point, 
you can exit and get all your different resources. Let's see how many blocks broken, minerals collected. Now, because the game is not out yet, I don't know how much that is worth, what the entry price is going to be and anything like that. And the last day on his list is Cryptoblades Kingdoms. Wow, have you guys heard about Cryptoblades and Cryptoblades Kingdoms? For Cryptoblades Kingdoms, there was also an announcement recently where they mentioned that instead of having a 1000 by 1000 playing field where you buy one plot of land and then this is your place in the kingdom, they have a 5000 by 5000 playing field. Meaning instead of 1 million plots of land, they're going to be 25 million plots of land. That might either decrease the price by a lot, so the barrier to entry is a lot less than we expected, or they have 25 as many players than they expected initially. What we learned from Crypto Blades Kingdoms in the past is that the characters right now you have in Crypto Blades, which by the way still does not work, I mean you can play the game but you don't earn anything, you will use those characters as your generals in this kingdom. Meaning the weapons you have, the characters you have, you can migrate onto kingdoms and then use them in there. From what we learned in the past, the game is probably going to be like Travian or like any other kingdom building game where you have your own plot of land and your own little kingdom inside this kingdom to manage and to guide through the ways, do battles, all of that. You can also have guilds. The only thing is that we have not seen any gameplay on that. And they announced this, I think, like three, four months ago. And we are still waiting. But because I'm part of the Crypto Blades Discord and I do actively read all the announcements, it seems like if you like trust the developers, which is really hard in this space, but if you trust the developers, this might be the biggest game out there soon. Like relatively close to Axis. If that is actually going to happen, no idea. We're going to see in the future. I personally think that you should believe in like something in life, or at least trust like some people. And in my case, I trust the Crypto Blades guys to actually like not ruin the game. Maybe I'm just too heavily invested personally, but when you look at all the announcements and who they work with and what they plan on doing, then there might be a bright future. Or there isn't. I can also be completely wrong and this is literally useless and completely worthless in like one week after it gets released. I have no idea. We all don't know. We just gotta wait and see. So that's everything Alex Beck has invested in based on his tweet. Obviously, you can always check which NFTs he buys based on the address that I have linked in the description down below. Where you can see like his wallet and the entire overview of which tokens he buys. Then also, it's just one wallet. Maybe he has 10, maybe he has 20. Even if you try to like look at somebody's wallet and what they own and what they have, doesn't mean they bought it. Somebody else could have sent that to them. So what did we learn today? they are projects and he always mentions that you shouldn't follow what he does but you should follow the idea and the line of thought that he has when he invests into something so when he invests into vr metaverses and upcoming worlds where you can actually buy advertising space and walk around then maybe we should look for those projects that are upcoming that he never talked about because they potentially have that little extra spicy bit that 10x is their value in no time my name is person i hope this was helpful and take care